Basically, you wire this like my Strife MOSFET video. So, rev trigger here. You can see I've got um, my usual two wires. And those are just signal current, so they run all the way up here, and they come back here, and they go into the FET, just like on my Strife MOSFET. Um, and those are just on the rev trigger. And then you'd wire that the same. You can see here, here's my um, little diode. You can add a plug-in motor block. I didn't on this one because I just changed the input voltage, so I don't need to pull the block out. And you can't swap this with any other block, so I didn't see the need for a plug-in uh, plug motor block. And there was limited space. So you can see the MOSFET is wired the same as usual. So down here, I've just kept the standard trigger micro switch because you don't need to change it. I've kept the interlock and I've kept the standard trigger um, pew micro switch here, um, which is, again, perfectly adequate for the job. You don't need to go being stupid and trying to cram a huge, great big 21 amp bomb on into there, um, which is, frankly, unnecessary. Um, and I've used the standard wiring runs in here, and you can see that there's those blue and those red wires. Now, this red wire that comes to the trigger, remember, is the feed. So I'm going to go through now um, the other end and then I'll come to this one in a second because what I've done is I've separated the sound and the firing into two circuits but what I have done is I've retained the same power supply for both. So there's no extra batteries, it all runs off of one plug, I can plug anything into there and I'll show you that in a second. Main power comes in here, then you have one red feed here which is going to your trigger as per the strife wiring diagram and that's your signal current power for your MOSFET and uh, that obviously is on the low side so it'll just draw what it needs to uh, create a signal current across the MOSFET channels to uh, then initiate the high side and then you have a red feed off of that so I've split that into two normally that would just go straight down here to the motor so you can see there's the main motor, main, the main motor lead these are only pulling 16 amps so I'm well under the size for 18 AWG so I didn't feel the need to go thicker so there's the motor feed as usual um, and going into the front two terminals where I've wired in the conventional way. This feed here is going for the sound and lighting circuit, I'll come on to that. Negatives. So again, the negative now has to split into quite a few, it splits into four on this, on this loom. So there's one negative going over here to the FET, to the uh, right hand pin there, just like in the usual strife loom and there's the uh, other one coming out with the um, flyback diode in place between the two. And then there are two negatives, one negative wire going to this LED, one negative wire going to that LED. And what I've done with those is again, it's just a common negative, and again, the other one goes down here, and I'll come and talk through this in a second. So that's all you need to do with your negatives. You need one feed down here for your sound and light, one up here for your motors, and then whatever your LEDs. You can splice them wherever you want. I just happened to splice them all in here to make one join. What I did is I removed the LEDs from the motors because um, it would be much more cumbersome to put different resistors on. Obviously in the stock setup the resistors are contained within the um, RF suppression board so I didn't want them coming on when I rev, I want them on all the time. So what I've done is I've utilized the Jamdor switch up here and here you can see that's a 470 ohm resistor and it's only fe it's just feeding those two LEDs. It's fine one resistor for two LEDs, it's not the best practice but it works okay and it won't explode and uh, when I've got the jam door shut, these are on, and when I have the jam door open, they're off, because there's times when you don't want the LEDs on. You could wire a separate switch if you want. So that is the main circuit. So I started by doing the stuff in the grip, running all the little thin wires up here, and you basically have a nest of thin control wiring and LED wiring sticking out the end. Uh, if you have trouble with that kind of thing, then just label it. So I started by doing the MOSFET the same as I do the Strife ones. You can always go back and check my Strife guide or shortly you'll be able to purchase a very, very neat little kit from Blastersmiths that will replace this with a tiny PCB board. So you'll be able to replace all of that with that pretty shortly. So that's an idea of how there's, there's the standard um, FET that you would normally use and you can see that it, would, it, it contains the flyback diode already all of this it has the flyback diode in it it has the 10k resistor in it and it has a plug here for the trigger switches so that's going to really help so that's just an idea of how much size difference that's going to make so now we come to how i've managed to retain the sound and keep the sound um, doing its thing on its own voltage and actually not misbehaving so what you need for that i'll just put this aside what you need for that is one of these um, this is an intelligent power supply board they sometimes get called buck jumpers amongst other things, these are for solar panels, all kinds of things. You can use a different board to this one. I used this one because it allowed me to adjust the um, output voltage and I wanted to try it for a couple of other things. There are much smaller, sweeter versions of this. All you basically need is a regulated 5 volt power supply. 
Now, I know people are saying, eh, thick volt. It's not six volts, trust me. Nominal voltage to that soundboard is five volts. You're looking at four um, AA batteries at 1.2 volts each. You do the maths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up first. And uh, I've got my test pack here. Now, these are intelligent, these particular boards. So what you do is you put in your power in like this. Don't do the LiPo for this job with crocodile clips. Using crocodile clips with LiPo is extremely stupid. But this is designed to work with my board. And then I get my voltmeter and then I have to set my output voltage. Now these come preset to various voltages, so let's see. Oh, and uh, just for Bobo Lolo, look, a real nice analog voltmeter. Oh yeah, baby. So that's 10 volts, that's too much at the moment, that's about 20 volts, because I tried this for running a fan for something. So I've got to turn the voltage down using the adjustment knob. Right, okay, um, I'm on the 10 volt scale, so what I want to go to is I want to go to five volts. I'm currently at eight, so I just need to go down three volts about half a turn usually I think a turn per volt, can't remember yeah okay it's, it's a turn per volt nearly so 1 2.5 so every 180 degree turn, sorry, half turn is a volt so there we go, that's 5.5, it just go down half a volt now it'll do that no matter what input voltage I put in there up to 20 volts so I can now go if I want to I can put virtually anything into this end and it will give me a 5 volt measured output it'll never go over 5 volts right up to 20 volts supply so that way round your sound is completely protected from over, from over uh, volting and getting damaged so that board is what that one does at the bottom and I'll put that out of the way for a minute so now we're going to set up the sound and what we do is we run the two main battery wires into the in on the soundboard and then on here the red and the black wire that work that come from here right that's the input wires normally they go to the they go to there's a little power block that they come from there's the thermistor that I was talking about earlier on and these red and black wires normally go to the battery tray so I've cut those off the battery tray because I don't want them coming from the battery tray and they go onto the outputs. The outputs are ma marked, the pads, negative, positive, and you can see they match up. So what I've done there is LiPo comes in, five volts comes out. And then I added a switch in the power supply line. Um, and this means that I can go dark with my sound if I want, so I can just turn my sound on and off. It's worked very well so far. I've had no problems with that. So what I've got to do is I then have to feed, underneath these wires, I have to feed the power supply wire to get it all to fit. It is a little bit tight in the shell. I would say that the downside of this method is that it does make quite a tight fit into the shell. Um, but I think it's worth it because there's a lot in there that you're getting a lot out. So what I did was I went underneath the power wire like that, fed my main battery wire in here like this. And then in the front, there's a couple of mods you need to make to take a battery pack. So I took out the battery tray completely because I didn't want it in there. So I took the battery tray right out for now. And then what I had to do was, and this is a bit of a hack mod because I changed it the other day while it was in the blaster. Cut this, cut this away a little bit. If you're going to retain it at any time using the battery tray, leave a little bit at the front. So I cut away those two ribs just on one side and that gives room for the plug. And you can then shove the plug up by the barrel and it doesn't get in the way of the lipo space. The other thing to be aware of is at the front here, um, you can see here, this is a piece from a rapid strike. That's the retained nut for a rapid strike for the battery tray at the front. Um, on the standard battery tray, which I've got somewhere, the, the, uh, the bit goes on the end here, that's where the thread goes to retain the battery tray door. And you put it here like that and it sits in there. And I forgot, if you're going to do this as a stock mod, just chop this part off. So keep this bulkhead and the little nub with the, with the thread in it and then bond the whole thing into the front. But I, I thought it was like the modulus and I thought it was retained in there, but it's not. So after I'd messed up the cutting of that, I had to... Uh, put this extra piece in but the beauty of that is with a bit of modification I can now use this as a battery pack effectively and I can put it in there like that and uh, I can put on the end of here I can put a battery connector and I can then um, have my kids can play with it at home obviously the rhinos will suck the rechargeables flat pretty quickly but who cares they're rechargeable so that's what they're for so you can do that too you can have like a multiple power supply version if you wish um, if you want to keep the stock motors you can even have um, one for IMRs you could probably get away with that. This will work just as well with IMRs and stock motors because obviously it doesn't matter what the input voltage is to that. Now one thing you can do is you can put a little sticky pad on here and just retain that in there. I didn't bother because I haven't felt the need to do that. Now one thing I've noticed is that my switch has come a little bit adrift there and I might just put some more glue on that in a minute. So once you've done that 
and you've got everything hooked up, I'll just give you a demonstration of how this works in practice. Um, obviously, all the power supply is now fully regulated, so I don't have to worry about anything happening to my precious soundboard. So my pew pew noises will continue regardless of anything else that I do. You then don't have any ugly separate battery pack, which I think is a bonus. Now this will take quite a, quite a large battery pack actually, without much change. I'm currently running this 1.3 2S, so I'll just plug a 2S in first, and then... Yeah. So you can see the PP working on 2S and uh, the motors work fine on 2S. Those are matched wheels by the way. I have had some trouble with them uh, catching slightly as they foam build up occurs. Now obviously you can put 3S in there. So I can go 3S. There's 3S and I can go even higher, that beep was my camera battery. 3S LIHV. Right. And that is a monster. And you can see that my sound circuit is absolutely fine. So that is the superior way to mod your Cassian Andor. Then you've just got to put it back together. All I did with these is that there's a positive feed up here to the switch and then it comes back down and the positive feed connects to these two so that when you, when you shut that, the lights come on. Now I'll just show you that quickly. UV LED, there you go, on, on, off, on, off, okay? So those are all pretty basic. Enjoy your awesome Cassian Andor. I love mine. It's a killing machine. Thank you very much.